Hi YouTube, what's up? This is Ashen Wolf here. I'm an extrasensory completion process facilitator, coach, and I am here today with Christina Martine and she can also let you know what she does. And we're gonna be talking about energy and Qigong and getting super into that uh, world. Yeah, people know me as Christina Martine. Basically, I have, um, have a YouTube channel. I don't post as much on, on it anymore. I'm a little bit more focused on my Cyber Fairy Music Project. Um, but through both projects, I, I really feel like it's my mission to share, um, you know, God's light, the universe's light through music, art, and, and words. And um, one of my main um, accomplishments, I guess, <laughs> the, the most amazing thing that came out of uh, all the spiritual work that I've done is fifth dimensional healing i just wanted to kind of do a little plug here <laughs> um it's a book you can find it on amazon and i'm going to be releasing it on audible really soon which i'm really excited about um so you'll get to kind of do meditations along with my voice so yeah please check this out and you can check me out on youtube and cyber fairy is also where i post a lot of you know content these days <laughs> amazing okay awesome so I guess to start off, do you want to start by just getting into Qigong a little bit? I know that you also jumped into that world at uh, at some point, so maybe you want to tell the viewers a little bit your story with that or how it's kind of impacted your life or how you've enjoyed it, things like that. Um, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I've always been uh, energetically sensitive. And it was a curse for a lot of my life because I would take on everyone's energy around me, you know, um, and I didn't understand that when I was feeling anxiety, it, ne it wasn't necessarily mine. I would have like huge panic attacks at workplaces <laughs> just be from being yeah. around people. And so yeah. I was like, okay, I have to take control. I have to take um, my power back somehow. And so I found a master in my city and I was like, yeah, I need some help. <laughs> so I went there like every you know, once a month and learned all these different movements and stuff. And I started to really understand that uh, uh, there's a whole energy world, like energy, if that's the best way to put it, manifest the physical. Um, and we can learn how to harness energy and work with it. Um, and that's kind of what my book's about too, just to plug it again. Um, awesome. Learning how to, how to kind of go into the body and, and release energy blockages. So, oh, yeah. you know, I, I learned how to do this for myself so I wouldn't suffer anymore. So I could eventually start helping other people too. Cause you know, we, we complain about being sick and, you know, having chronic illness and being depressed, but it's always, we don't just get sick. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we get yeah. sick because of something you know, <laughs> deeper. It's always, you know, either a spiritual blockage, mental blockage, emotional or physical, or maybe some past life karma or something like that. And if we kind of, start doing this energy work, we can go deeper into the body and actually discover like, where is this blockage in my body? Oh, that's there because I, you know, haven't forgiven that person and my liver is like, like clouded. And now, oh, I can like now all my depression has gone. So it's very um, interesting. And I think that, you know, in the Western world, we kind of view the body as a machine, whereas you know, more in Eastern practices, which I tend to favor a little bit sometimes, you know, in combination with Western medicine, they view the body as a holistic garden, which you have to constantly feed and like just love and, you know, some flowers can blossom. <laughs> and that's just a, a nicer way to look at it. Um, you know, um, I'm, like I've dated some people who were really, really sick and it's like, um, trying to explain that to them like um you know that you you do have the power to heal yourself but first you have to acknowledge that somehow you chose this and that's the hardest thing for people to admit like somehow I chose to be sick so I could heal myself um but yeah learning about energy in general it just I think it empowers you because then you're not just looking at the world on a physical level right you're not just like buying into the illusion it's like okay what what am I that's like the the closest I can get to God is working with energy. Ooh. And for people who don't believe in energy or don't understand it or, you know, hear about chi or prana, you, you can't necessarily measure it, but you can measure its correlates, which is consciousness, bioluminescence, biochemical processes. So think about the systems of the world. You know, the, the, the systems have been built by the wounded masculine. We're so stuck in the mind. We're so stuck in 
uh, the physical. And that's why we're sick. We need to balance whatever's going on with the feminine. We need to get in touch with our emotions and, and our energy and our heart. And energy healing helps that. Yes, it absolutely <laughs> does. And I love everything that you're saying. And it's so true that, you know, Eastern medicine, they understand the value of energy and how energy brings our body out of alignment, how it's at the core. And it's so connected to, to these ailments that we're having, you know, and um, yeah, I think it's just incredible how they've designed Qigong to really get at the core of working with our chi, but also working with the physical action of our body. Mm. And I also found Qigong at a very similar time in my life where I was like, you know, I, I need to find something to get outside of the matrix and I need to find something to start working on healing myself. And it was honestly this thing where I actually had no idea what to do next. And it was just kind of this thing that came to me. It was like, you have to just follow your intuition and invest all of your energy into this. And I had no idea why it was so important, but I just kind of jumped off this cliff where I was like, okay, I'm going to start doing Qigong and I'm going to go to these classes and let's see what's, what's there for me. And what I really found, and I wasn't expecting this at all, that as you're saying, you know, you're, you're a very energy sensitive person as, and me as well. And it really does the, the Qigong, the movements allow you to, to balance your chi and balance your nervous system so that the way chi can throw, flow free, freely and good in your body again and bring you back to that alignment. And when you're healthy and when your energy is healthy, you can allow yourself to really calm your nervous system. And what I love about Qigong is it's that like moving meditation and it's that, uh, it's that movement with this, this whole process this whole energy process of getting into your energy and getting into this meditation. And what I really found is the more that I did Qigong, I started feeling that energy within my body and I could start to feel it energetically coming out of my hands and I could start to feel it energetically moving through me. And then I started to have a deeper awareness for what energy felt like outside of me as well and how to move energy outside of me. So what I really love about Qigong is that that physical movement, that physical energy, it's almost like your, your physical body is getting in the flow of the quantum field itself and you're moving with the quantum field itself and with, with Qi in and of itself. And when you're in that movement, that flow, you can actually feel it internally and ex externally and internally as well. So when it comes to like, uh, I guess, Wei Qi energy and manifestation, how, how do you think that uh, energy plays into manifestation or how would you kind of, um, what would you like to say about manifestation, I guess? Hmm. I think a lot of people, I, first of all, I think we're all magicians. I think a lot of us are black magicians simply because we're unconscious about mm -hmm. our power because of the institutions yes. telling us like you're not powerful, but we're casting spells all day long with where we're placing our attention, what we're speaking, you know, what we're visualizing, we're, you know, we're, we're magnetizing whatever we're thinking about. We're drawing that in. Um, and I think that in order to start um, practicing real magic or manifestations, I don't think it's enough to kind of just say like, oh, I'm, I wanna get rich. <laughs> like, I think we really have to use the energy and the emotion and go a little deeper because once again, that's kind of surface level to just be like, I wanna be rich. Um, on a logical perspective, it's like, think about why you wanna do what you wanna do. Um, I was doing a meditation last night um, and in this guided meditation, this guy was like, take your wants and just put them outside of you and just kind of separate yourself from them and think about like why you actually want what you want. Um, and then it made me realize like what I really want is, um, you know, is to feel connected, is to feel like, you know, just to feel happy and joyful. And so I think if we think about the deeper meaning of why we want what we want, and we decide to align with like a bigger purpose kind of and yeah. and um realize that the greatest joy that we can experience is is it comes from service comes from offering our heart i think then 
that energy that we that we put into our manifestations that we when we really feel it from our heart that magnetizes yeah. everything to us and it's like when we're in that vibration of service then we don't really need anything we don't like we, we get what we want but then we don't need it to complete ourselves if that makes mm -hmm. sense that was a little weird <laughs> Yeah. yeah. It it absolutely makes me think of, you know, when we're manifesting things and when we want things all the time, we're doing it in this manipulative way and we're trying to get something that we're not even thinking about, right? Like it's like we're going in these circles and we're going in all these directions to get something other than what we actually want and we think that we want that thing, but really we have these deeper vulnerable motives behind it so definitely it's like go into it and really figure out why do you want that thing why yeah. is it that you deeply want it and go directly for what energy you're actually after is it really about the shoes or is it about <laughs> feeling connected right yeah it's, it's definitely it's like what is the vibration or what is the emotion or essence of that thing okay do i have the ability to feel that right now you do and then that puts you on the right timeline to manifest you know what it means it's like it's like that's the real magic it's like once you can align with that aspect of you that aspect of you in the grand perspective already exists so why don't you just align with it and then all that stuff will happen but it's hard to let go it's hard that's the thing i'm i struggle with it <laughs> yes, absolutely and like you can even tell yourself instead of like being like oh i have to let go of this thing or i have to instead you can just accept okay right now it's hard for me to get this thing right now it's hard for me to go in the direction of that thing right so i have to accept that right now that's my reality but i'm not letting go of that thing i'm not completely telling myself i'm never going to go after that thing or i'm never going to get it i'm just accepting that right now it feels hard to get it feels like it's not at my access so instead i'm going to go in the direction of what feels more accessible what feels easier to do right now what's a good like middle ground or next step or what action can i take that feels like that that's as close as i can get to that thing today right i think that we spend a lot of time thinking you know worried about the past holding on to the past stuff or clinging to some future moment that may not happen i think yep. i think our our, our, our oh, yeah point of power is the present it's always the present and when we truly just kind of sit with ourselves we do kind of see past the illusion we do see that we're just energy and we have everything inside of us and it's like oh hmm, i guess i didn't really need that those pair of shoes after all <laughs> you know? absolutely absolutely so i'm curious what kind of like witchy practices or shamanic practices are you into or what what's your kind of experience with coming to that path um i i've always been witchy i think i took it from past life <laughs> i've always done oh, yeah. obviously i researched on the internet you know when i was little i was like oh witchcraft and nature and deities and stuff like that i think you already know who you are <laughs> And I re remembered pretty young. Um, I don't think I did it very safely. I think, you know, I was in bad states and maybe worked with dark and darker entities by accident. Um, yeah. I think as long as you're you're in a good state and you're kind of clear and you have good intentions, um, I think it's pretty safe to work with energy or to work with guides. And there's a lot of stigma around it, you know, you know, maybe from religion, but everything's energy. So it's like you may as well learn how to start working with it consciously <laughs> or it's going to start working with you you know what i mean um for, but for, for practices what do i do um besides like yeah energy stuff um i'm i i came to like women like sacred womanly priestess practices way later in life mm -hmm. Okay. because trying to fit into the wounded masculine <laughs> patriarchy and make money like i became very masculine um, especially when I was doing a lot of teaching and stuff, interviewing people, I was like, well, I got to compete with men, so I have to be as strong as men. And that's not really the power that women have. So like just sitting with my and like feeling my womb space and and really learning like about my natural cycles, um, working with my blood and like putting like, you know, putting blood on your skin. That's a little weird for people, but you know, or um, giving your blood back to the earth. Um, these are ancient practices that I think they've been hidden from us on purpose. 
So I, I would say that for women, like really look into these ancient practices because um, that's where our power comes from, right? This, our womb is our power center and we hold so much pain there. We hold so much trauma there. I didn't even know how much I was holding there until I started working with it. And obviously that affects your relationships and just everything like, yeah. What about I mean, you? When you? Yeah, absolutely. And just building on what you just said first, um, you know, I think like when you think about what period blood actually is, it's not weird at all. Like it's like this sacred blood that literally runs through us and has the power to create humans like our womb space is this like magical portal that literally can create a human so it's like what else can it create what else does it have the potential for right so yeah. like connecting with that pure magic like i'm i'm in on that like you know there's something weird about that like that is something that is like this magic within us within our body that we have the potential to connect with and create so like yeah, definitely. I've heard of, uh, you know, painting with the period blood and connecting with the womb space and bringing back the period blood back to the earth. Also, is another one that I've heard of is returning it to the earth as well to nourish the earth. Um, yeah, but the practices that I do most, mostly for shamanism and witchy stuff is I work a lot with fire and I work a lot with like the natural elements and crystals and things. So I like to like I have a bunch of crystals with me right now. And whenever I'm with my clients or in sessions, I am always just holding the crystals because it helps just like center me and allow my nervous system to regulate and allow kind of the energy of the session to go more smoothly. And it helps me just like channel that energy and build that vortex with them. And um, yeah, I'm just working a lot with the elements as well. Like when I go into nature with my friends or when I go into nature by myself, really connecting with the magic of water in and of itself and the magic of fire in and of itself and letting that be like this like large crystal or this large piece of magic that can run through me and help me um, feel a deeper sense of manifestation and intention and energy feeling. So those are really my practices, I would say at the core. I just love working with nature the very most and returning to nature to kind of feel that magic and, and feel the magic within me. So I think that that's at the core of my shamanic practices is just nature, returning to nature. Yeah, I think that's so necessary too, because we're very disconnected. We just go to the grocery store and we're like, oh great, a whole bunch of oranges someone picked for me. And it's like, we don't actually know where it came from. We're, we don't, we're not like choosing our own food and connecting to it. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, that's, it's, it's a really profound thing to realize, like, those forces, those elemental forces are the building blocks of life. They create us. Nature's super creative. And so we're these inherently creative beings. And we can kind of work with these forces, energies, to, um, to manifest. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I, I love that you mentioned that so much because it's so true. We're so disconnected from food and how food is grown as a whole. And it's like, okay, so my brother is an organic farmer. And if you only knew what it took for him to grow a field of vegetables, what it took to make those vegetables organic, you know, like sometimes the practices that he's doing, he's going around in a much more ridiculously hard way just to make that thing organic or to avoid using herbicides and pesticides. And it's like, there's all these different steps from putting the soil down to making the soil fertile, to making the soil arable, mm -hmm. to putting that seed in. And then you're, you're talking about the care of watering it and trimming it and making it grow each day so it's like just think about the magic that your food goes through and the care and the people that were involved or even the process of bringing that food you know from the farmer to the grocery store where was it transported from and just thinking about the magic of the food that you're eating is going to connect you to it so much more because it's like these I, I feel like fruits and vegetables are like these pure pieces of like sunlight and earth that we're literally consuming into our body. Like it is literally from the womb of the earth herself. Like that's pretty magical. It's, it's hard to comprehend if you haven't seen it up close. That's, uh, when, when you see a farmer working his ass off all season long to get those vegetables on the table for you, you're like, oh, wow, there's a lot more into this process than I ever thought.
like even just being someone you could sit there and you could try to think about the process that goes through but until you see it for your own eyes you don't even comprehend all of the, the different steps and the work that it takes to get that food that we're consuming right I'm just I'm grateful <laughs> as a society like we're just so used to oh yeah to gratification yeah. and it's it's because we've allowed ourselves to become this way right we've allowed ourselves to want these quick fixes and these easy things right and we've gone towards the the era of comfort and social media where everything's at our fingertips and accessible and everything's so easy and so we're always focused towards how to make things easier for ourselves or more comforting or more quick but it's like if you actually find the sacredness in life it's not about what's quick or what's comfortable and usually the best things in life don't come because it was easy and comfortable and you know like we're actually going to give ourselves so much more if we start to return to the sacredness of life and to actually find I guess the meaning the deeper meaning in things and to connect with things on a deeper level that aren't just about comfort and things like that yeah I try, I try to remind myself of that a lot like I get so stuck in my head <laughs> I'm like what am I doing I'm not going to get anywhere with this stupid problem problem solving machine it's just going to bring me more problems to solve like all day um and I try to remind myself like instead of going to the quick fixes or like you know the the pleasure like kind of the lower chakra stuff or being stuck in the mind mind we have to be centered we have to move back into the heart space and be present because once again I, i've already said this but like that that is where your true power is that's when you connect to like source be it the source field or the quantum field or whatever you want to call it that's when you can see yourself as a spiritual being and that's when the answers are already there like everything you're seeking externally you already know it <laughs> like you can you can think about it in the mind but you you come to a place where you already know the knowledge and you, you can rest in that place um okay. it's like it's like looking through a tiny little looking glass um a tiny little pinhole when you look with the mind or like your your base desires or something but when you move into the heart space you're just you're one with all of creation. You can kind of access the Akashic records and um, yeah, you, you, you can make decisions from a place of true clarity and power. So I always remind myself of that, like the mind will never stop. <laughs> it will just create more, more and more problems. We can't solve our problems from the same level of consciousness that created them. We have to get out and move back into the heart space. That, that's, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So how would you describe the quantum field to people or how do you, I guess, personally work with the quantum field or envision it? Yeah, that's a good question. It's like, how do you describe something immaterial? Yeah. I, I don't know, like the way I look at like the creation of life, whether you see the big bang or whatever, I think yeah. consciousness wanted to know itself. So it kind of moves into denser and denser realities. So I think the kind of foundation is a kind of, we're kind of pure potential and then we have kind of like an energy template, I guess. And yeah. it's everywhere, it's, it's nowhere, <laughs> it's hard to explain. But I think it, we, can tap, we can tap into that field any, at any time because essentially we are nothing, right? We're just kind of imagining, hallucinating all this physical yeah. stuff. Yeah. And so if we kind of slow down and just, tap into it, we, we can. And I mean, Qigong's perfect for that because there's specific movements that activate specific channels that are in alignment with like science and acupuncture and meridians in the body, which are, you know, verifiable. So doing those yeah. movements or doing yoga or whatever, you start to feel it. And maybe we can't comprehend it, but the effects are so powerful that there's no denying that there's we're tapping into something that maybe we don't have all the answers for yet or the sciences for yet but it's coming you know absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I, I don't know i feel like the quantum field is like this ocean of energy that is just like everything that is mm -hmm. and it's it's this energy that's literally all around us right now it's swimming around us and there's different levels and there's different dimensions and things like that and that's how we find our individual world 
but it's like really like right outside you right now energy is moving everywhere and there's all of these different um extensions of that energy even on your physical body or even on inanimate object and the core of that energy even though it appears to be dense or it appears to be finite it's like that's just energy that has been more densified that has been you know put down more but it's still energy it's still a part of that quantum field and it's just expressing itself in that way right so how would you advise people to connect to energy or connect to the quantum field on a daily basis what would you tell them to do for that i would just suggest uh sitting <laughs> as boring as yeah. that is and just feeling yourself like yeah. not i mean you can touch yourself for sure like you can get into your body somehow and then just close your eyes and kind of look inside of your body. Even doing this yeah. is going to start healing your body naturally. Your inner world is begging for your attention. <laughs> Sometimes I don't meditate for a long time. And then I sit down and I'm just kind of start looking inside myself. And yeah. Just start, you know, you can do anything to get in touch with your energy. Maybe you do yoga, maybe you do Reiki, something to calm you down and access that subtle point and it's not about pushing it's about relaxing the more subtle you become the more able you're the more you're able to access the subtle realm so do whatever you have to do to get in touch with your energy sit down and just look inside of you um and you know maybe you discover that like you have pain inside of you that happens a lot and it's like well where is this coming from it's probably always been there but now you're just aware of it <laughs> which happens to be a lot um so i think you know if that happens just you know placing your hands on whatever is painful just looking at it and like sending it attention often we have all these diseases or these negative emotions or painful emotions but they they, they just want attention they just want to be acknowledged uh, darkness is just another distortion of light and it just wants to be loved <laughs> in the end it wants attention so yeah. just send your body like send each part of your body love and attention and it will start to respond to you i think we forget that um the body is intelligent there's intelligence all over us like the heart is a brain it has like it can remember things the gut you know sends uh, uh, hormones and things like information to the brain and stuff it's all all linked so I think just slowing down and learning to look inside yourself as boring as it can be <laughs> is necessary <laughs> what about what about you absolutely I I love that and just to I would say the same thing and just to build on that I would say you know a lot of the time it feels so hard for us to stop everything and to feel our emotions and to be with that because we feel it and it doesn't feel good and we start freaking out and we're like what are we going to do about this and i don't want to feel this and it doesn't feel good but what we need to understand is we need to release the control to to change it and to make it different than it is and instead surrender to the fact that whether you want to be aware of it or not whether you want to do something about it or not, it is within you, it exists within you. So you're probably going to have more control if you actually bring awareness to the fact that this is going on within you, rather than ignore it, right, and push it away. And it also comes back to people don't want to be with their emotions, because it puts them solely in the reality of their life. And usually that's like, oh, wow, there's all these things that I don't like, and I'm unhappy with, right? Yeah. And they don't want to because they think that they can't do anything about it and that they think that they can't change it, right? But what I want to say to people is the first thing that you can do with your life and the first thing that you can do to change your life, actually just be with presence, with validation, with those feelings, and you don't have to fight, you know, it, your reality doesn't need to change overnight. But just by being in reality and bringing reality closer you're going to be so much more aware and in control of what to do from there, what your next steps are, and you're going to be closer to yourself. 
And when we're closer to ourselves and we bring ourselves closer, it's like we're not fighting anymore. We're not fighting some external thing within us anymore. It's like now we're we're in this to win this together, you know, and there's no part of us that we're fighting against or that we're pushing against, right? I mean, just think about how much you're wasting energy. If you're trying to move forward in a, in a certain direction and you're fighting yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So the first thing that we need to do is stop fighting ourselves and pushing ourselves away and bring ourselves closer so that we can allow ourselves to move forward together. And we don't have to stress so much about changing the reality overnight or making it different. And we can just like, become aware that the awareness of that thing is not going to make it any less true than it already was, right? So you might as well try to have a deeper control over what is already there, right? Because I don't know about you, when I'm running in a direction that I want to see, I don't want to be blinded. I don't yeah. want to bump into something or smash my face into a wall. So let's take the blinders off and let's just be in presence, even if it's scary. And that doesn't mean it's not scary. And it doesn't mean it's not uncomfortable. You know, these things, they break us. They break us down in some really tremendous ways. But it, we have to become more comfortable that it's okay and it's not it's not gonna it's not gonna be the end of our world to, to do that and to be in presence with ourselves um yeah, we, we do tend to think it's gonna be forever when we're feeling these bad emotions it's like when will this end <laughs> like, but it does if you just if, if you do sit with it you, you know fear can exist it, it, fear can only exist when you run from it, right? Then it's real. But if you kind of look at your darkness or your shadow and you can integrate it, then you can see, oh, it's a part of me that wants to be loved. That's it. <laughs> and it's obviously a lot harder than just saying that. It takes work to actually, you know, go into yourself and actually like look at yourself honestly. Um, and I think in this world with so many distractions, it, it's not as easy to, um, you know, we make, we make a lot of excuses about why we're not on the right path or, or feeling good or, and stuff like that. There are so many distractions. There are so many instant gratifications that give us little bits of pleasure. But then once again, it's like, well, then you're not doing that deeper work. And then you wonder why you're not actually manifesting and achieving things and bumping into walls all the time. It's because you're, you're not actually doing the deeper work. You're just giving yourself that little bit of pleasure to ignore what's really going on and I think I think we're all figuring out how to how to how to integrate you know the shadow and and yeah I love that so much and it's so true so many people get so scared that it's never gonna end or I'm gonna get stuck there or what if you took a second to get outside of that thought outside of that fear that it's never gonna end it's never gonna be over and just allow yourself to, to look from an outside perspective, almost as if you were someone standing outside of yourself, looking at yourself, feeling that way. Mm -hmm. How does that person feel about this experience? Does that person who's not completely identified with the experience of this fear, do they feel the same that it's never going to be there? It's never going to end and it's never going to be over. I mean, question, is it even possible? Is it even possible that this doesn't end? Is it even possible well, that this doesn't change. I mean, life is always changing. The universe is always changing and it's mm -hmm. always in evolution. Just think about how many times you went through good things and bad things in your life and how quickly if things progressed and changed, you know, throughout your life. So of course, you know, if you feel that thing, it's not going to feel good, but it, it can't last forever to feel that way. And at least you're going to to hear its voice and hear what it has to say yeah that that reminds me of um i was doing this tony robbins challenge thing and he was like if you have a problem you can ask yourself from different perspectives most of the time when we're panicked we just like go to our wounded child and we're like ah just drink some wine and like you know go on yes. tinder and it's like you can you can ask the magician inside of you you can ask the the, the yeah. sovereign you can ask um the warrior you can ask the lover the healer whatever and these are different kind of aspects inside of you and you can discover what maybe where they are which ones you've been living from which ones you don't have you haven't access yet and you're going to get so many different responses and maybe you know find some peace or something like 
and that that kind of reminds me of, of your your um your healing um what is it part the parts work the parts work yeah. it was amazing when when we did that session I was like oh my god I'm crying in front of everyone but it's yeah it's like you you can kind of access since we're living in this quantum soup it's like you can you can find the answer you can channel from any point in it so we're not limited to the body we're not limited to the mind right we're not even limited to this physical human experience um yes. we can tap into like our ancestors for example and ask them to speak through us that's what i love to do channeling work that's my practice like for singing like <laughs> mediumship i guess it's mediumship but i don't like to say that to people uh but it's so profound um yeah you, it was such a profound healing that that you offered amazing yeah I, I mean, it's so true. We can access any part of consciousness within the universe and become that. And it's just incredible how that consciousness can just speak through us, you know? And I really love what you said there that, you know, we always go towards the wounded child. So if that's your first response and if that's the response you usually go to, why not choose a different path? Why not find a different aspect of yourself to respond to, right? instead of just seeing it in this unconscious way where we're just going towards that wounded child and we're automatically going towards our fear how can we consciously find that higher part of ourselves how can we consciously allow our consciousness to align with a different part of ourselves a part of ourselves that knows the answer a part of ourselves that's gonna choose a different action or a better action this time around mm -hmm. it's a good reminder <laughs> thanks for watching everybody and uh, like Ashton said, um, my name is Christina Martin. Uh, I do have a YouTube channel. I don't post there as much anymore, but I, I am very focused on my, my healing book. Um, you can find it on Audible very soon. It's called Fifth Dimensional Healing and it's full of guided meditations. It's basically like a manual, a holistic healing manual and it just helps you become a better human. <laughs> And yeah, if you if you want to like get in touch with me and stay connected to me, um, Cyber Fairy, P S Y B E R F A I R Y. That's where I post a lot of my creative art stuff. And you know, I'm still doing spiritual messages, but I'm I I explore my shadow a little more <laughs> through my art these days. <laughs> like it's it's yeah, it's the whole thing. So yeah. So thanks for watching guys. Um, this is Ashton Wolf. You can find me at lushheartsblossoming.com if you would like to, and you can check out any one of my offerings. I offer completion process and purse work sessions. So you can work with me one-on-one, -on -one, or sometimes I offer workshops in group programs, depending on what's going on at the time. Thanks so much for watching. And thank you so much for being here with me, Christina. Thank you.